Let's face it, in the contemporary world of college football, we're so used to seeing the high yardage and, yes, high scoring offenses throughout the country in all the major conferences. That's just the way it is. But at least one school is proof that, hey, you don't necessarily have to have the high yardage, high scoring offenses that we see almost everywhere in order to win, as long as your defense comes ready to play. And for the guys from Madison, case in point, Wisconsin, the Badgers, they know a thing or two about solid defense. In fact, last season, they were seventh in the country in total D. In fact, third in the country in rushing defense, only allowing 99 yards of rushing per game. Wow. The Badgers won the West last year in the Big Ten Conference and won 11 games, including a major bowl, beating Western Michigan in the Cotton Bowl. And they have 15 total starters back, and yes, Wisconsin – they are the clear-cut choice to win the West Division in the Big Ten. My preview of Wisconsin will start now with the defense, and why not? I mean, this is the backbone of the team, and defensive line, they're going to be in excellent shape to, again, make it difficult for opponents to run on them. Connor Shee, he's back at a defensive end. He really shines in the 3-4 alignment, 60 tackles, had five sacks a year ago. And... You've got Alec James, who will also play some defensive end as well with 23 tackles. A, a defensive tackle position, this guy's been around 31 starts for Chikwe Obashi. And at nose guard, we'll see if he can stay healthy. Alive Sakapolu, a year ago, played nine games, started five, but again was troubled with injury. Linebackers, uh, mixed reviews on this. I think inside linebackers are going to be terrific, especially with T.J. Edwards. Um, one heck of a player. He really shined, especially in that Cotton Bowl win. Um, 89 tackles a year ago for the Red Shirt Junior. And another inside linebacker, you have Jack Sheehy. So, looking at inside linebacker, they're set. Outside linebacker, this is going to be a little nerve-wracking because you not only lost both of them, but both, by the way, were picked in this past spring's NFL draft, including T.J. Watt, that's J.J.'s brother, First round draft picked by Pittsburgh, and Vince Beagle was taken in the fourth round. So for Wisconsin to maintain that high level of play, it could come down to outside linebacker because, again, you lose both Watt and you lose Beagle. So you've got Garrett Dooley, a redshirt senior on one side, and on the other side, redshirt sophomore in Zach Bond. So those two guys will really bear watching for the upcoming season because they're the two unknowns. In terms of the secondary, Return a couple of them. Derek Tindall is back, a senior with three picks a year ago, and a guy that had four interceptions in 2016, strong safety in Dakota Dixon. But you do lose two secondary players. So Jordan Shelton's gone in the corner. The free safety's gone to in Leo Musso. So Natrol Jamerson will occupy that free safety spot. He's a senior. He also, too, returns kicks. And at the other corner, it's a battle right now between Nick Nelson, a junior, or it could go to a freshman in Scott Nelson. Wisconsin, again, last year, their defense was one of the biggest reasons why they won 11 ball games and won the West Division. Uh, fourth in scoring D, and the secondary wasn't too bad either. Top 30 in the country in passing defense. Now, again, I would expect Wisconsin's defense, despite losing both Watt as well as Beagle, to still be solid. In terms of the offense, this is an area where, again, Wisconsin, let's face it, they're never going to be confused with Texas Tech or Indiana in terms of just throwing the ball all over the place, okay? This is not the Wisconsin way. They're more of a balanced attack. Even though the passing offense probably will never average 350 yards per game, what they look for is consistency when it comes to completing passes. They feel Alex Hornibrook probably gives them the best shot. Now, Alex did not start in 2016. Bart Houston did. But just a few games into the season, um, Houston got pulled in favor of Hornibrook to try to revive the offense, and Hornibrook started the next nine games and probably would have finished the entire season as a starter but got hurt, so Houston came back in. In fact, Hornibrook did not even play in the Big Ten title game against Penn State, but did play in the Cotton Bowl and set a Cotton Bowl record to Alex with completion percentage, hitting all his passes but one. So there's optimism there that Hornibrook can get the job done. He's just got to stay healthy. Last year, uh, nine touchdowns, seven interceptions. And he'll have Jazz PV to throw to, a very experienced receiver now entering his senior year. PV had 63 receptions and five touchdowns a year ago. And Quintez Cephas, a sophomore, last year as a freshman, started five games but did play in all 14. Most of the offensive line is intact for the Badgers. So a lot of reason to feel good if you're a Wisconsin fan. 
tight end, one of the best around in Troy Fumagalli, terrific blocking tight end, but also, too, he could be serviceable receiving, had a couple of touchdowns a year ago, and 47 catches. Running off the offensive line, four of the other five come back, a combined 43 starts for these five down linemen alone. Michael Dider is back at center, redshirt junior. A guy that also started off 14 games last year for the Badgers in Bo Benchwam, a junior. You have John Dietzen, offensive guard. He'll play on the left side. He started eight games last year. And last year as a freshman, David Edwards started seven games. They'll move him, though, from the right tackle to the left tackle position. They do lose, though, Ryan Ramchek, who was a first-round draft pick, so you'd be foolish to say they're not going to miss him. So who will occupy a right tackle spot for Wisconsin? Right now it's a battle between Jacob Maxwell Jr. or could go to a freshman. They're very high right now on Patrick Castle. In terms of offense last year, Wisconsin really made strides as far as running the ball. Two years ago, only 95th in the country in rushing. Last year they moved to 56 spots, 39th in the nation, averaging over 200 yards per game. So the good news is most of the offensive line is back to help pave the way, but the bad news is you lost your top two backs, Corey Clement. He'll be a big boy, as will Dare Ungumbawale. So the number three guy on the depth chart last year, probably the starter this year in Bradrick Shaw, who still gained about 500 yards last year. Not bad when you consider that he was third in the depth chart. And Chris James, he'll be a nice addition, the transfer from Pitt, who played a couple of seasons with the Panthers. And we'll see, too, Austin Ramish, the fullback, who started nine games a year ago. As far as special teams go, the health of the place kicker, that's Rafael Gaglioni, that's going to really, really bear watching. You know, two years ago, hit the game winner, a 47-yard field goal in the final seconds to win at Lincoln, Nebraska. Last year got off to a good start, but his season was sidelined because of injury. But, again, got off to a good start last year before he got hurt. And punting, Anthony Lottie averaged about 38 yards per boot. Highlighting the schedule for Wisconsin, it looks very favorable for, again, a double-digit winning season. Some games to watch out for mid-September. Got to go to Provo and play BYU, who I think will be good. Get two weeks to prepare for the Big Ten opener at home against a Northwestern team that will be pretty good as far as rushing the ball. The following week, got to go to Nebraska to face the Huskers. But then if you look at the rest of the schedule, you'll notice there's no Ohio State on it. Last year, Wisconsin had to play the Buckeyes in the regular season. Lost to them in overtime. There is a matchup, though, against Michigan, second to last game. But remember, the Wolverines lost most of their starters from last season. And you wrap up the year for Paul Bunyan's axe at Minnesota against the Golden Gophers. The Vegas win projection, 9.5. That's high, but I think Wisconsin will get at least 10 wins this season. I'm going to say 10-2, and two, and they'll once again win the West Division. Primarily, a lot of experience, and they're going to be very tough on the offensive and defensive lines. Will that be enough, though, to defeat either Penn State or Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game? Well, for my opinion on that, you'll have to wait till late August for my college football playoff preview show. That's my look at Wisconsin. We'll see you next time.